Hello Exiles, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming and welcome to another Path of Exile video. Uh, in today's video I'm going to go over a Bone Shatter Juggernaut that I've been making to try to make an immortal character in order to practice uber bosses. I've always regretted the fact that I'm not very good at even pinnacle bosses but generally uber bosses. Um, the only time I can overcome those is when I get to the point of DPS in a trade league where I can just completely you know, disassemble them, uh, make them trivial, that kind of thing. Uh, and so I thought, you know, so that possibly I can start farming them earlier in league starts, I should actually practice the uber bosses. And in order to do that, I want to make a character that's kind of like training wheels. And currently there is a good way to do that um, using the new unique um, oop, Eternal Damnation. And also uh, being a Juggernaut, because Juggernaut has the Unbreakable. So basically what you do is you uh, turn a bunch of your uh, damage. I have like a Dawnbreaker here, which turns a bunch of the damage that I take into fire damage. Um, I'm stacking a bunch of uh, extra fire resist to overcome the minus maximum resistances here. Um, and then a portion of my Chaos Resistance, which isn't quite maxed yet, although max is now 70, so it's pretty close. Um, and if I had a better rolled amulet, uh, I believe a perfectly, not even a perfectly rolled amulet, so maybe I should have done that before I uh, put my Anoint on there and whatnot in my Catalyst. But uh, basically the idea is you just uh, convert a bunch of damage over um and then lower the amount you're taking overall and then the juggernaut's armor will mitigate whatever is left basically so um and i can stack up a bunch of armor um oop, take this off real quick um with my buffs up i'm at or with my flask up rather uh, I'm at 108,434 armor currently. Uh, that's at level 84. That'll go up a little bit, of course, but um, I don't have all of like the aura effect I'm going to get and all of that kind of good stuff. But yeah, overall, uh, just get a lot of armor, uh, mitigate a bunch of the resistances, and yeah, set that off. So uh, one of the things that I have helping me that is the Brass Dome, which basically completely counteracts this for elemental resistances specifically, uh, giving me plus five to all maximum elemental resistances. And it also has a very high base armor, uh, almost 4,000, which uh, once again benefits from Unbreakable. Um, I also didn't want to make a character that's too high of DPS. Um, I would like a lot higher than what I currently have. Once I have all of my gems leveled up, uh, POB puts me at my current tree at around like 680,000 DPS, which is a little too low. I'd like to be at least uh, 1 to 1.5, maybe 2 million, but... I have a lot of upgrades to make. Uh, I crafted this weapon myself. I just literally found the fractured tenderizer on the ground and kind of went through. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I guess I'll just do a uh, guardian map of some sort. Uh, we'll just do, I guess it doesn't matter too much, but we'll do a minotaur. Just do a minotaur. Kind of show the character and then we'll talk more about it. Uh, so a bunch of physical uh, reduction and Ellie weakness, but and then increased life. So this is going to take a very long time to kill the Minotaur, but that's okay. Um, we'll have a lot of time to talk about the character. Um, so one of the things that makes this so interesting is this relic, which is going to make it a little difficult to actually replicate this build. Uh, but this isn't really to replicate a build to be replicated. Um, with two other sources, I get 24% damage per endurance charge, and I currently have uh, seven endurance charges. Uh, I could get up to 10. Uh, there's a pair of boots that give plus one endurance charges, and then I could get two precursors emblems, uh, but that's not really the plan at the moment. Um, so yeah, DPS is going to be low. Uh, we're looking at 47 physical damage reduction uh, for this map, so... Uh, we'll just do this. Uh, I'll do the rituals. And yeah, just uh, 
the nice thing about this is you can kind of just sit there and whatever whatever comes comes you don't have to really worry about anything you don't have to look too much at the screen i do like you know glance side eye at my health bar just to make sure that uh, it's not dropping uh, usually when it is dropping it's one of those um, rare mods that makes it so that you can't recover above half of your health um, if you look at my region while i'm fighting here i have uh 2600 i got up to regen per second uh while i'm fighting which is most of my health um i also have recoup on top of that 18 percent recoup from a ring uh so i am pretty much uh recovering all of my health every second uh, which more than makes up for uh, the bone shatter um, i usually don't have to worry too much about any of this kind of stuff uh, as far as what mods I put on, there are a couple that I do have to pay attention to. Uh, but yeah, I can kind of, as long as I'm fighting, I can pretty much stand in degen bubbles. I can, uh, you know, more or less deal with just about everything. Uh, and that's the point. I want this character to be able to, you know, really just face tank everything for real. Um, okay. I don't really need that and uh sure we'll go with scorch i should be able to handle scorch with my uh, endurance charges up uh even with the elemental weakness i would think i'll kind of pay attention to that uh but even if not even if things start doing a little bit of damage to me which it looks like they are okay so yeah even scorched i only go down to 83 uh res with my endurance charges up so I'm absolutely fine. I probably shouldn't also take exposure, but yeah, more or less defensively, this is kind of a powerhouse. Uh, I need to, I, I have gotten almost all, I think I have four more points that I'm going to put in uh, one more max fire res and two more max all res, um, and then one point to travel there. Uh, this is also physical resistant on top of that, and it's a golem, so it's going to take a little while to kill, but yeah. It doesn't matter too much because there's not much that can kill me at the moment. Uh, I did die a couple of times leveling before I got everything set up when I was just in a tabula and a couple of... Uh, uh, I was wearing two Praxis rings while I was leveling all the way through, so uh, deaths. I've died four times. Uh, I think I've died once, uh, and that's because I didn't realize that the Exarch, or I've died once in actual maps since I've been to maps and got everything set up. Um, and that's because I didn't realize that uh, the Exarch altars can give minus like 103% chaos resistance. Which is pretty insane. Uh, some of the shrines, I was, I thought I could just handle all of the shrines, but yeah, the minus 103 chaos resist also lowers uh, my elemental damage mitigation. So that's a that's a big deal. Uh, I'm not going to do the Cassia. I'm just going to walk past. Uh, I'll put up my molten shell just in case. Uh, that only did like a thousand damage to my molten shell, even sitting in all of those explosions. Uh, so yeah, I don't even know if I need the the other uh, max res that would put me at seventy eight for cold and lightning and eighty four for fire. Um, I think I'm gonna do it just in case I might need it for ubers maybe I'll do some offensive nodes and then like once I get into the 90s and I'm ready to start fighting the ubers uh, I will go over and grab all of that all res but or max res see what we get in these rituals I am specced into ritual which is why I'm doing it um, I have a bunch of random stuff deferred <laughs> i like to defer things until they're really cheap i don't think that's the most efficient way to do it but it allows me to see more pages so i i usually defer things until they're like less than a thousand tribute to buy and yeah this is going to be probably even longer than my uh ruthless map showcase uh, 
I yeah, I, I'm kind of putting Ruthless on hold for the moment, but I do want to get back and play that. But first, I want to do some uber boss practice. Uh, so yeah, I have like an ancient orb and a bunch of gilded scarabs and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna check this pile driver and topaz ring just in case. Uh, pile driver specifically because oh, okay, is that tier one? Yep, tier one fire res, nice, nice. So I might be able to craft something pretty good out of that. Uh, leech is life, can't be leeched. Uh, I do have leech. I don't know how necessary it is for me to have leech, honestly. Um, but you know, couldn't hurt. Also, the leech I have uh, gives me a total of 18% uh, attack speed. I have the little wheel near the Marauder, so the Marauder start. And uh, that's a lot of attack speed. I'm currently using Divergent Bone Shatter, which gives me... Uh, I don't really need to dodge the Toxic Balls or anything, really. There's just... Uh, just not a whole lot that can kill me. Now, granted, this map has uh, no modifiers to damage, but I uh, have tanked four of the meteors all at once that you get from the Searing Exarch Towers, and it did uh, maybe like a little over a third of my health. Uh, these could be potentially dangerous, the little little minion guys, maybe. Yeah, they did a little bit of damage. My health bar dropped briefly. Um, I tanked four of those meteors while I was also taking 1,200 chaos damage per second while my flasks were going. Um, and yeah, no problem at all. Uh, also, the monsters on that map had plus a total of 380% physical as extra fire. So that was kind of good. Yeah, it's just uh it's just a monster the combination of all of the best defensive uh like dawnbreaker is known to be very good um you know this new amulet here from the the eternal damnation from the uh new league mechanic from the sanctum is insanely powerful especially when combined with the uh, ability to mitigate the elemental damage with armor all right. Okay, so Minotaur did a little bit to me when uh, he dove down. I am immune to shock. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of sit on him and hold the button and ramp up. Uh, currently, my attack speed isn't that high, so you can see I, I'm in between like... Um, oh, and I'm not stun immune either, so that kind of uh, lowers my stacking. I probably should grab some sort of stun immunity. I figured that my mitigation is high enough that... I shouldn't have to deal with it too much, but I can get up as high as 24 uh, Bone Shatter stacks. And as low as uh, 13 or 12 there. I want to place down my totem. I'm currently using an Ancestral Protector instead of Warchief because it helps me ramp faster. It keeps dying, as you would expect. But yeah, I'm I'm not taking any damage here. Uh, my current regen per second is 3,700. <laughs> uh, I'm also using to help ramp as well. Uh, I am full and pale, uh, and I am not crit. So um, I don't think I'll have enough points to go crit. Uh, but my Bone Shatter is currently only level 17, so I'm missing a lot of uh, base damage and added damage through that. And uh, all of my other gems are unqualitied and underleveled as well, except for, like, I think I got a level 20 determination off another character, or maybe even level 21, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, and outside of that, pretty much everything's a little, little low at the moment. So I, you know, normally you'd have at least tw level 20 gems before you start doing guardians, or at least like level 19. Uh, but I currently have level 17 bone shatter, so 
There you go. <laughs> uh, it took me a really long time. Uh, kind of, you know, immovable object versus unstoppable force type scenario. But anything I set my mind out to kill, I will kill it eventually. Assuming it doesn't have regen, because I also do not have uh, the mastery that reduces regen nearby. Uh, which I may grab if that becomes an issue, but I'd prefer to just... Uh, just boost my damage up a bit. Oh, I should probably go back in and do my uh, ritual stuff so I don't forget. All right. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep deferring all of these. Uh, is this another gilded scarab? Yep. Uh, check these. Mana regen, lightning resist on Amy. Int. Nothing good there. Um, ooh. Ooh. That's nice. I should probably just defer it though. Uh, it's a little expensive, and I don't need it right now. There you go. Um, okay. So that's all taken care of. Uh, I guess I'll just grab this since I can afford it. And I will go over the gear um, a little more in detail and my skill tree. Hey, and I did level up as well. Um, I guess I just put it into damage for now. I can grab like bone breaker and stuff. But anyway, uh, gear first. Um, of course I have this relic, which is extremely helpful. Um, this is my weapon. I found the fractured tenderizer on the floor just this morning. Um, I had been previously, I went through a bunch of different weapons, uh, trying various like levels of attack speed. I tried crit, so I have this, uh, uh, Pernark with 6.8 crit chance. Um, <clears throat> I have this weapon that I used for leveling uh, that I just happen to have. There aren't a lot of good, unfortunately, there's not a ton of good uh, maces on the market. A lot of people must not craft them, but um, yeah, this is my mace. Uh, it does have 20% chance to impale, which is perfect with the impale support and uh, forceful skewering with this little node that gives me exactly 100% um, with the craft so there's like a, what one in one in three chance that you'll get 20% so pretty good uh, unfortunately I didn't get that high of a physical damage roll with it I could recraft it it's eight chaos and pop but I don't know if it's really worth it on this but basically what I did is I went in and uh, I had that fracture and I just used deafening essences of contempt on it uh, until I hit attack speed as well. Um, and then luckily I had an open prefix, so I was able to craft that on. So uh, very, very simple. Um, this ring is pretty good. Uh, it has high life. It is chaos res. I need the dex, so the 51 dex is excellent. Um, Okay, fire res, and then 18% of damage taken it recouped his life, which gives me a decent amount of little regen. Um, it's really nice with bone chatter since we're damaging ourselves as well. Uh, my helmet is the broken crown. You probably haven't seen a ton of builds using this. I actually think it's a little underrated, but specifically for my build, um, it's nice because it gives a lot of energy shield. And I have uh, Eldritch Battery on my Relic, which I used for my previous build. So in order to do this, um, and one of the reasons that's nice is because uh, we have the Armor and Energy Shield Mastery, which defend with 120% of your armor while not on low energy shield. So even though we have a mark on hit setup and it eats up our energy shield very quickly, uh, we use Divine Shield. Uh, we hit ourselves, and that causes the Divine Shield to regenerate, and then any damage we take from anything else will also cause it to regenerate. Uh, so we're always on full life, so we get a 20% more multiplier to our armor at all times. So basically, with the Flask Up, we're looking at about 130,000 uh, effective armor. So really nice. Um, I bought this one that has overall pretty high rolls. Um, as well as a corrupt that gives 90% uh, cost and reservation multiplier for 15 chaos. Uh, it has 61 chaos resist, by the way. So, and uh, 545 armor is nothing to sneeze at either. So, overall, 
this is actually a really kind of underutilized, underrated item. And yeah, giving me all that chaos resist is very helpful for uh, the Eternal Damnation. So basically, these two items right here are uh, carrying almost all of my chaos resist. I mean, I have high chaos resist boots too, but uh, this is doing work. This is a good way to get chaos resist. Um, I have an Eternal Damnation with Weapon Artistry. Uh, this gives attack speed um, and melee strike range. As you may notice, I have a pretty high chance to block, 48. However, um, every time I take fire damage, uh, 200 fire damage from hits, uh, it goes down one. So basically, uh, when I'm fighting a lot of things at once, my block chance goes down to zero. But since we can kind of face tank everything anyway, that doesn't matter. Uh, when you're fighting things that hit you for bigger amounts but less frequently, we'll actually probably keep most of the block chance. Um, although we're going to hit ourselves as well um, and take a portion of that as fire. Uh, which will probably cause their black to go down. So, you know, maybe not. But kind of a nice little combination there. Um, you know, Bone Shatter needs the uh, strike range as well. I'm getting that through a variety of sources. I have um, the... I have Warrior Training, which also gives AoE, which helps with the clear, because Bone Shatter causes the little pulses um, whenever you stun. And then I also am running this node here, Assured Strike, which also gives me, me my additional strike. So uh, kind of nice little clear combos there. Um, and yeah, Weapon Artistry is pretty solid overall. Uh, it's a nice way to get some extra strike range. Probably I might swap it out for something a little higher DPS later, but I think overall this is pretty good. Um, this ring is really good. Unfortunately, we can't make use of any of the mana capacity of it. Uh, but yeah, just a lot of cold and lightning resist, a uh, ton of life, a uh, hundred and twenty six life. Um, you know, I have the fertile catalyst on it, but even then I have a tier one life roll and it's on a coral ring. Uh, so just about as much life as you can possibly expect to get on a ring. Um, yeah, overall, that's very nice. And then tier two cold and lightning resist. And then I crafted a uh, flat physical damage roll onto it. So overall, very good. Uh, Dawnbreaker, of course, is a core component of this build. Uh, mine isn't fantastic, but it is pretty good. Um, it's one off perfect for the physical and lightning taken as fire and two off perfect for the cold taken as fire. Uh, the armor roll, the base armor is very low. It's 532. Um, you know, I could use a sacred orb or what, not a sacred orb, I forget what they're called, but I could use uh, the orb that rerolls the bases to try to get higher, uh, which would be nice because it would be very easy to get over 2000, but I don't really think it's worth it. Um, chance to black roll is low um, and it's got pretty high increased armor overall. So I actually dropped this, uh, it was the very first, uh, um, Exarch, I think, yeah, Exarch of this actual league. I dropped this exact Dawnbreaker, and I've kind of been sitting on it thinking about, you know, what I should use it for, and I thought this was a good opportunity. So, uh, yeah, I have that. Uh, went over the Brass Dome already. Um, my Brass Dome is uh, probably, you know, the all max res is the most important part, uh, but it leaves a little bit to be desired as far as the armor roll. Uh, both in the base and the actual roll, the percentage roll. But, you know, you can very easily get 41, 42, uh, 100 armor on this, and that scales extremely well with all the percentage armor and, of course, uh, with Unbreakable. So uh, having that is quite good. Uh, these gloves, I have Overwhelm Physical Damage Reduction and Rage on Hit with Attacks on them um, just low rolls i just threw these together because i might replace these gloves um, and then it has uh, tier one flat armor uh, tier one percent uh, stun black recovery hybrid and tier one uh, flat armor and life hybrid so it's just overall pretty high armor and it has uh, good attack speed good regen uh, low strength but you know that's whatever uh, then yeah i went over oh i didn't go over this belt this belt has uh yeah once again about as high a life as you can expect i guess it's a bottom roll uh tier two roll but it's still pretty good um and then 
you know, I have the life implicit as well. It's a leather belt. Uh, once again, wasted mana. Um, energy shield is okay. It was a lot better before I had the broken crown, but now, you know, I don't really need that much uh, energy shield. And then uh, flask effect duration is fine, uh, but it's a low roll. It's tier five, so kind of bad there. Um, and lastly, my boots. These are the same boots I used on my last character, on my uh, Holy Flame Totem uh, Inquisitor that I did. Um, very high life, very high life regen, uh, high, very high lightning res and chaos, um, crafted movement speed, unfortunately, and then life regenerate and uh, plus one maximum fire res, which I would like to get to plus two, uh, but you know, it's hard to do. I haven't tried to do it since I swapped it over to this character. I still have some orbs of conflict left, but I need to get a lot more grand uh, Eldritch Altar or uh, Embers in order to, you know, get the second highest roll so I can make the attempt a few more times. So I need to farm or buy some of those. Um, and then my flasks all have gained charges when you're hit, uh, but they're kind of suboptimal because first of all, they're low level. I don't have high level flasks yet. Um, second of all, I mean, it's kind of hard to roll good mods and the gain charge when you're hit by an enemy. So this one only has gained one charge when you're hit. Uh, luckily, the ones that have only one charge gained on a hit are my longer lasting ones, except for the Quicksilver, uh, which is... This is probably the least uh, essential out of all of these, but uh, in fact, I have Leap Slam. I could probably get rid of the Quicksilver altogether and just put like a Granite Flask there, or perhaps, um, uh, I don't know, some other flask, maybe even a unique flask to give me some damage. But uh, yeah, just a Sulfur Flask, Basalt Flask, uh, Silver Flask, Quicksilver. Um, and then I have this. I don't really need it. I should just get a Corrupted Blood Immunity Jewel. Um, but yeah, I just, I ported it over, uh, but bleeds and corrupted blood aren't going to do that much, but serious corrupted blood probably will. So I probably still will need corrupted blood immunity. Uh, when I go over and grab prismatic skin here, which is one, two, three, four points, I could just grab the corrupted blood immunity here. Uh, regular bleeds are probably not going to do anything to me though. So that is the gear. Uh, go over the skill tree here. Uh, skill tree is pretty basic, so what I did while leveling is I went through the life and armor, warrior's blood, uh, rushed right to lust for carnage because it makes uh, leap slamming very good. I actually pathed this way uh, while leveling and I specced out of it, uh, but I'm going to spec one of the points back. Um, but yeah, I basically just rushed over to Art of the Gladiator and then uh, down here and got like the... the uh, strike the additional strike range right away and strikes additional nearby targets uh, i wanted to have this by time i got uh bone shatter so that was very important uh tree looks a little awkward still uh, especially considering i have to stretch it all the way up here um oh i should probably go over the gems really quick uh gems main my main setup is divergent bone shatter endurance charge on melee stun uh, I have seven currently, uh, so I am getting, uh, what is it, 28? Is that right? No, that, that can't be right. Hang on. Um, yeah, it is. 28% more damage from this. Um, and it has reduced enemy stun threshold, which makes it easier to trigger the pulses from Bone Shatter. Um, and then melee physical damage, uh, Impale fortify and brutality uh melee physical and brutality are two of the highest multipliers available um endurance charge on melee stun you know if we get up to 10 endurance charges at some point that'll be 40 percent more damage which is uh right up there with one of the higher more damage multipliers uh fortify because it is a lot of points to go grab these nodes and then get the fortify and hit and this node becomes useless if I get these and then get the uh, melee hits fortify because I would get minus three maximum fortification. Um, but I could do this if I, for instance, get a, um, a timeless jewel here. 
uh, and I get somehow three plus one maximum fortifications on all of my different points here. So uh, yeah, I am going to put a lethal pride here at some point and probably upgrade that. That'll be huge. So that's um, that. Uh, then, uh, yeah, that's my main link setup. I have vitality with arrogance uh, because it's way too much. Uh, my maximum mana is very low. Uh, vitality is not percentage, but flat re um, reservation. So I just put it on my life since I have plenty of life and it doesn't go down much anyway. Uh, determination and pride. And these are all in this 90% uh, cost reservation. So it's a big, big uh, lowering as far as that. Uh, it might be more efficient actually to put my purity of elements instead of determination since I already have uh, reduced reservation via the mastery but uh, yeah I'm not sure uh, mark on hit poachers mark poachers mark gives me flat damage which scales very good with the very high damage effectiveness of divergent bone shatter as well as uh, physical minus physical damage reduction so kind of nice there um, and then life and mana on hit I mean, mana on hit does nothing. Life on hit, I guess, is a little extra boon to all of our recovery. Um, because I got this 90% uh, cost and reservation multiplier, I was able to fit in War Banner. Um, the reason I chose War Banner over, like, Defiance Banner is because our defenses are good enough. Uh, the minus crit uh, chance for nearby enemies wouldn't benefit us at all because we can't take extra damage from crits because of Brass Dome. Uh, War Banner is basically a more multiplier, um, which scales as well with uh, another thing that we have here, Mame, which we have linked with Vengeance and Ancestral Protector. Uh, Vengeance actually will trigger when we hit ourselves with Bone Shatter as well, uh, similar to things like um, unflinching or if we were to get, if we didn't have unflinching, inexorable. Um, it's just when you're hit you have a chance uh yeah when you're hit not hit by an enemy so vengeance can actually proc when we hit ourselves so we use this um an ancestral protector to uh, get maim which uh makes enemies take uh 10 percent increased physical damage and then we also have this which has nearby enemies take 11 uh percent increased physical damage uh which is slightly scaled it goes up to like 12 or 13 uh, because of the quality as well, uh, which gives the effect of the aura as well as our regular aura effect. So we're probably getting like 25% more damage via that. Uh, you can kind of think of it similar to like a shock or something. Uh, it's not huge, but it is helpful. So we have that going. Uh, then I, yeah, I mentioned purity of elements. This makes us immune to all elemental ailments. Uh, we have Frost Blink just to have an instant blink, which is useful for like the Sanctum. And also it helps us move faster because you can use it to uh, animation cancel out of your Leap Slam. So like say I was midair and wanted to uh, like blink out of it. That way there isn't like landing lag. Uh, very nice. Uh, we have Molten Shell with increased duration. Uh, 2020 increased duration. Uh, so we get a 10,000 molten shell. Uh, I do not have all molten shell, but I should because I can replace it with poacher's mark and that'll make us super invincible for a very long time. Uh, and then I just have leap slam faster attacks. I thought about putting um, fortify on here and putting just like cruelty or something, uh, but cruelty isn't that much higher of a more damage multiplier. And I'm not sure if I could reliably get the, uh, or if I would remember to reliably get the, uh, the fortify up via leap slam. So I just thought it's better to keep it on here. Um, so yeah, as you can see, gems are still missing levels and quality in a lot of cases, but that's the gem stuff. Um, yeah, then Soul of Steel is very important. Just gives a boatload of armor, some res, um, and then max Ellie resist, uh, which scales really well with all of our other stuff. Uh, kind of just every bit of max uh, resist scales really well with Unbreakable and uh, Dawnbreaker. So those combine and uh, Eternal Damnation. Those three things combine incredibly well together. Um, and every bit of max res helps as well, making us basically exponentially more tanky for every max res we get. Um, uh, got like warrior training, strong arm, born to fight. Um, and then I have uh, important thing here, thread of hope, 
Uh, it is a very large thread of hope. I think it was like 35 chaos for a very large with only minus 10 LE res. It was pretty cheap. Um, and I use that to get Retaliation, Disciple of Slaughter, and Disciple of Unyielding. Um, I also have Marked for Death, which gives us Culling Strike against Marked Enemies, Increased Mark Effect, um, and then uh, the chance to gain a Frenzy Charge when we hit a Marked Enemy, uh, as well as we have a chance to gain a Frenzy Charge on Kill and a Minimum Frenzy Charge via Disciple of Slaughter, um, and the extra damage per Frenzy Charge. Uh, similarly, we have all of the uh, chance to gain, although that doesn't matter at all, and the damage per. Um, so between Unyielding, um, Disciple of the Unyielding, and uh, this Relic, we have 24% damage per Endurance Charge. So very good. Uh, so then it goes without saying that we have all of the Endurance Charges we can get on the tree. Uh, stamina, Vigor, and Endurance. Uh, those are all taken care of. Um, we have Champion of the Cause and the additional Reservation Efficiency. Um, this is generic, both of these Reservation Efficiency, which allows the burden on our life to be lower. I did not want to get the Mastery for 20% increased life reservation of skills uh, because it's. I don't really think it's worth a point to get, um, you know, maybe like 40, 50 more health. Um, and we're going to be scaling a lot more life at some point anyway. Um, I do have the aura, increased aura effect uh, mastery here. Um, and then sovereignty. Uh, I don't have this aura effect yet, and I will probably get that. I actually didn't think I had this mastery yet. Apparently I do. Um, so I thought I had 16% more aura effect to get, but I actually only have six. Um, other important things. Uh, skull cracking, which... Uh, is, gives a bunch of stun duration and reduced stun threshold which helps our clear um, and can also help our single target a little bit although it, you may have noticed i don't really stun rares or bosses in uh, high level maps that's going to be a lot harder to do on one-handed uh, because you don't get like kinetic impacts and that kind of thing there's a lot of stun stuff uh wrecking ball as well uh, there's a ton of stun stuff that you get with two-handed weapons that you don't get with one-handed weapons. So uh, stunning bosses isn't really going to be a thing on this character, unfortunately. Uh, but we still need to stun for our clear, so uh, we have that kind of stuff. Um, and then we have like Devotion, which gives us uh, Aura Effect as well, um, and the Life Mastery for flat life. Uh, one of the downsides of Brass Dome is that we don't get life from our strength, uh, which we would normally be getting 205 flat life, which would be scaled. So we're missing like 400 life because we're wearing Brass Dome. Uh, but the trade-off of not being able to take a crit and all the max res and the huge base armor is definitely worth it. But still, yeah, that's like a, that's a lot of life that we're missing. So um, yeah, the flat life here helps with that. Um, other than that, I talked about Faith and Steel and the Armor and Energy Shield Mastery, giving us a 20% more multiplier with a uh, thing. Uh, determination reduced. Yeah, basically, uh, and then like Forceful Skewering. Uh, yeah, all that stuff basically. Juggernaut and Barbarism sounds like my neighbor is rubbing up the motorcycle. So I, I think that's a good time to call it. Um, I guess I'll go over. I'm running Soul of Arakali. Okay, they're gone. <laughs> um, Soul of Arakali, I still need to get uh, Malagaro. I may get Armala, uh, just in case I get reduced chaos resist. And uh, I have Soul of Yugal uh, for reduced effective curses on me, uh, which I also stack with this. So we have 79% uh, reduced effective curses on us most of the time. Um, that's pretty nice. And then reduced... Uh, a chance to reflect hexes and reduce reflected damage. Um, I think I can run reflect maps because my armor is so high that I don't think I'll kill myself, and also I defer so much of the or uh, change so much of the damage. Convert it. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, so between those two things, I might be able to run fizz reflect maps. I haven't tried yet, uh, but I'll probably try that in the near future. Uh, so that is my pantheon. A lot of people ask. Uh, I run Soul of Arakali on almost all of my characters. Uh, damage over the over time might be the only thing that can hurt us, uh, but I'm definitely getting Malagaro and maybe Armala as well. 
uh probably pick those up shortly here um and i think oh uh watcher's eye watcher's eye i'm um, using the exact same one physical damage taken as cold while affected by purity of elements and recovery rate from vitality uh so nothing offensive there uh the extra impales while affected by pride might be really nice uh since we have impale scaling going on uh that might be really good but other than that you know i'm not really sure what else i would want on a watcher's eye uh these are very good nodes um oh and i'm taking resolute technique so i don't have to take any accuracy uh, i'm not running undeniable um, the order I took these in was I first took, um, I, I took Unbreakable last for sure. I think I took Unflinching, which is helpful for Bone Shatter, gets us those Endurance Charges right away. Um, and then I took Untiring. Um, I think you could take these in either order, Untiring and then Unflinching. Uh, third, I took Unyielding, and for my Uber Lab, I took uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, for Uber Lab, I took Unyielding. I took Unbreakable third. So I went uh, Unflinching, Untiring, Unbreakable, and then Unyielding was the order that I did these in. Uh, overall, insanely tanky character. I will be interested to see how uh, much farther I can scale it as far as the damage goes. Um, and then see if I can get some good uber practice with these. So, um, yeah, if you have any ideas on how I can scale this better, uh, let me know in the comment section below. This has been Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and I will see you next time. Bye.